whenever like it's been like a family because as you said from the first south side story we've been playing every south side story right yeah. <laughs> sometimes even we get like we we think like uh, isn't this a bit much <laughs> but it's the love here is so humongous that we can never say no <laughs> I mean people if you ask they will say that they want another fresh rock and another <laughs> nostalgia when I mean, if we had we done that Right. There, there would have been no Navarasan. There would have been no Chatte. Right. Right. Of course, the bands that we followed, right. like Radiohead or uh, anyone, mm-hmm. it's the the medium of videos is a very big game changer for the music industry yeah, as it is. Many yeah. Malayalis, how many South Indians? And I say, if you don't understand, it's totally fine. I'm with you. Ten years, I don't understand anything. I'm just enjoying the music, He's and lying. you. <laughs> <laughs> crossing paths and dream theater is walking towards their gate oh my god. and we are like oh my god this is dream theater and we just started talking to them we we had collaborated with Marco Miniman at that time so welcome to news 18 sosha i am yatamani narayan and today i'm sitting with one of the most uh, brilliant bands of our generation thaikudam breath who are about to perform at south side story once again hello welcome to the show guys thank you thank uh, you for calling us here So, how, what is it about this particular festival that keeps bringing you back again and again? I mean, what uh, what kind of vibe do you get here performing? I think uh, whenever, like, it's been like a family because, as you said, from the first South Side Story, we've been playing every South Side Story. Right. Yeah. Sometimes <laughs> even we get like we we think like, uh, isn't this a bit much? <laughs> But it's the love here is so humongous that we can never say no, right. <laughs> and uh, we always. keep coming back because the audience is always super brilliant right. and super energetic and it's always great to be here in delhi and usually south side story happens in delhi yeah. and bombay yeah. so both the, both these venues is something that we crave to play more yeah. so yeah <laughs> so you know your song fish rock it 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 brought the whole band to the spotlight but after that song uh, the entire sound of the band changed but at the same time it retained the fans it uh, it, it created because of fish rock So, what does it mean about your listeners uh, and your connect with the listener that they're able to, you know, uh, they're okay with you uh, experimenting with other genres as well? I think we just started up, or started off this as just a one-off thing actually. Right. So it was basically for a TV show back Kappa in Kerala, Kappa, Kappa TV. So we had just two originals for that one. It was Fish Rock and Shiva, and all the other stuff were covers basically. Right. So I mean, we didn't have like major plans actually. We just just do this one TV show and that's it. Right. Uh, but the love we got from uh, the crowd right. after it was released on YouTube right. was like major. Right. So right. then people, all of us, just got together and said, "Okay, we should give." Uh, I mean, all en- en- inquiries started to come for the gig. So right. we thought that we will give it a try. Right. and then uh, it was like step by step for us actually so uh, we had let like, me initial couple of years we were just completely in touring uh, doing shows basically in uh, in kerala basically in kerala. yeah okay. so uh, but by that we by that time we knew that we had to come up with original stuff right. and so so at that time we we had a idea to do a dark heavy album which is okay. which turned out to be navarasan Navara yeah Right, right. So, uh, I mean, if, uh, as artists, I mean, we are supposed to explore yeah. different stuff. I mean, if you just look what people like, then we would be doing the same thing over and over again. Right, right. Nobody will ask for new stuff. Like, I mean, the the few. Yeah, I mean, you cannot get. There will be a saturation point. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. 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 I mean, people, if you ask, they will say that they want another fresh rock and another <laughs> nostalgia. But I mean, if we had we done that. Right. There, there would have been no Navarasan. There would have been no Chatte. Right. right. Yeah, but nobody asks for such a heavy thing. But right. that is the challenge of being an artist and artist. being pushing. I mean, try to push yourself to do right. something different. Right. Right. Yeah. So I would say that's it. Right. So you know, <laughs> <laughs> so album Navarasan it it explores a lot of themes. You know, uh, uh, about it, it about his history. It it also explores theme about. Uh, you know identity about society yes. so uh, how did you guys conceptualize that entire album and uh, what was that entire journey like I mean, basically the theme of uh, all the songs in uh, navarasam right. were like 
all songs at uh, very uh, socially relevant topics mm-hmm. uh, it is not like uh, like i said earlier really, it's like a dark and uh, heavier yeah. stuff we were looking so that the music has to match uh, with the lyrics as well i mean the lyrics should support the music as well so like theme should be uh, we can't be doing like a, a dark and heavy romantic song no <laughs> it should be <laughs> uh, so so a song like arachar is very politically politically driven when mm-hmm. I mean, chatta is a song oh sorry no 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 it's no, 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 no. uh chatta is a, a song that is like written in perspective ala uh, in point of view a person who has committed the suicide and he is just having a look back at his life like right. and navarasam is about kathakali right like. and uh, i mean all the songs have uh, different different themes right. actually right like. so i mean the idea was like all uh, songs lyrical content should be like socially relevant i mean right. we didn't want to do the usual also, stuff like, there were a couple of songs which uh, for example ni which we released in uh, nama nama yeah that track was originally actually it was part of cre- navarasam not part of navarasam it was conceptualized and almost completed right yeah that during right. navarasam right. Uh, but uh, we knew that that was something which will not go well with the elements that we are trying to pull out in navarasam right. the album because every song has a purpose in it like right. uh, one it's about uh, people not being one right. and that our goal should be focusing towards being uh, in harmony and going forward with love and respect right. for each other right like 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 mithun said uh, like navarasam the song is about uh, cultural cultures being dying slowly because the social or the society is not providing enough right. relevance to it right. Right. which is immense actually mm-hmm. so yeah right. right so how do you feel the multilingual aspect of your album so whether it's you know uh, navarasam or whether it is tama how does it help the band in you know reaching the broad audience and what kind of response you get uh, from your fans like when you create songs that also resonate with them actually we are to dance because <laughs> no from your perspective you are a non malayalam speaking person in the band and you are someone who interacts with the fans most of the time so right. i think you are the best person uh was it about the songs or the al- the <laughs> album the song the multilingual aspects of both your albums whether it's navarasam or nama uh okay how does it help in you know reaching to a broader audience and uh how does it help in you know help with the band's identity i think that has helped right from the beginning cause uh, we have been playing different genres with different languages and we have different style of singers in the band to cater mm-hmm. the audience so it has really helped and as as ashok said like from a uh, mm-hmm. different point of view being a non malayali mm-hmm. it's nice like like one of my favorite tracks from the album is khwab wow. and i really love i think more cause i can understand the words uh, yeah. to it also and all of it so that has helped us to reach out worldwide right cause everyone connects to something they have something in the album that they can connect to right. so that has played a really major role right. for us right. musically right. so you uh, so you guys also are very good at you know producing very rich music videos whether it's you know navarasam whether it's you know one uh, how do you approach the visual aspect of storytelling uh, with your songs music videos rich music videos rich music videos so no the thing is like um, everyone in the band uh, as m- much being brought up in india right. you cannot avoid uh, being part of the movie revolution here right. be it whichever language you are coming right. from like hindi malayalam tamil mm-hmm. whichever it is you are automatically drawn into movies right. and uh, everyone like govind primitu uh, everyone is one way or the other direct like, like connected with movies right so we had this vision and of course the bands that we followed the right. radiohead or the, anyone mm-hmm. it's the, the the medium of videos is a very big game changer for the music industry yeah, as it is yeah. so it, it kind of helps you if, if you have the <laughs> if you have the proper song uh-huh. and you are able to represent that song visually uh, that is the best way 
a, a, a listener can connect to that music. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it, if you read a book, of course, you can imagine everything and, you know, you have that, that third eye open. But right. when you're listening to music, sometimes a little bit of spoon feeding is needed. Yeah. I find it. Yeah. especially for pop music. Right. So that kind of helped us. And uh, so with that in mind, we've always kept our music videos some you know, relevant to the music that we are making. Right. Right. Navarasam was about Kadakali, one mm-hmm. was about uh, the artists, that you artists and, and the various people, various backgrounds, like right. how much unification is needed among the different aspects of life in different societies or economic backgrounds of people. Right. And uh, um, Sultan, the the, the the animation part of that uh, mm-hmm. was like uh, we don't know many Indian bands who have ventured into that animation. kind of animation, that kind of technology in that kind of a storytelling. Right. Like I, I'm not sure. I I could be ignorant about this. No, during that time. But during yeah, that yeah, time, yeah. I, I, I that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I, I don't think there were many bands, right. but I don't know. I I could be wrong. Right. But. Yeah, so that that video aspect always we've respected, mm-hmm. and we are only sad that we couldn't <laughs> make videos for all the songs all which the we, songs, we yeah. terribly want it's to. But taxing, yeah. yeah, but because of the independent music scene <laughs> and financial <laughs> restrictions, we are forced <laughs> not to, and we, our spending habits are not that good. Right. <laughs> so, right, right. I think what happens is when you have different languages in an album, like I come acro- across an. English song, okay, mm-hmm. and I listen to it, and I'm like, wow, this song is so cool. Mm-hmm. Then when I go deeper and I find, oh, this band is not, you know, just singing one language, and they they have a Malayalam song, they have a Tamil song, and then I listen to those songs also from the album, and I'm like, I don't understand anything, but it sounds really cool, <laughs> and that is what I think is happening, and that's how we've got the fan base right. all together. Right. So in the crowd, always there are so many of them, and I always ask them like, how many Malayalis, how many South Indians, and n- I say, if you don't understand, it's totally fine. I'm with you. Ten years, I don't understand anything. I'm just enjoying the music. He's and lying. you... Are <laughs> <laughs> selling, it's still selling the line. <laughs> right. I mean, video is a powerful thing. I mean, it just enhances the music. I mean, a right. couple of videos that have... Like Navarasam and Chatta yeah. in particular. I mean, it, the impact of the song, audio, I mean, the, the visual video, just, yeah. yeah, it's enhanced it multiple times. Right. Yeah. Right, right. So, you know, your album Nama was a mega collaborat- uh, collaborative album and, you know, you roped in so many legends, uh, Marco Minaman, or, you know, Gatri Bowman, and so many people, Usad Ashit Khan Ji. Uh, so, and it took you two years to, you know, make that album. So, how did you convince all these people, you know, join your vision, join your mag- magnum opus? It was pretty easy actually. I mean, everyone who who wanted, I mean, who collaborated in the album, right. they gave us their answers pretty quickly. And uh, as, except for two people, I think uh, yeah. Anand and Ram and right. and uh, the thing is, like Anand, we were not able to get in touch with him. Right. So uh, I think it was Chekil, you know. Yeah. You only contacted his wife because he knew his his wife's account in Facebook. Facebook some, yeah. some, mm-hmm. uh, they so had, just yeah. random message. Right. And it happened. Like she said, I'm not promising you anything, but I'll I'll see what I can do. Right. But that was something that was an incentive for us to like wait. And we waited. Like we also approached other artists also in that waiting yeah. period. Okay. But we were we basically waited at least more at least a little give or take more than a year. Okay. For just Anand. But you logged everyone in, in Yeah, that year. We, everything yeah. else was done. And, <laughs> and Govind is, uh, should be credited for that actually because it was his uh, relentless pursuit of, you know, mailing all these people, getting in touch with their people, whoever is, you know, responsible to communicate right. in between. And um, I think uh, the photographer, what was his name? Varun? Vikram? Vikram. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vikram also helped us a lot in uh, contacting many people. He yeah, also yeah. provided us with the uh, contacts of many artists. Like yeah. he's a pro Very photographer. Chris, Chris Adler, Chris Adler, Vikram, 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 Vikram and uh, <laughs> some <laughs> random things also happened because we met Jordan Rudis. Okay. We met him when we were like uh, uh, on a layover to uh, Sri Lanka in, Sri- in Colombo while we were going to Seychelles. Okay. So we are like. Crossing paths and Dream Theater is walking towards their gate. Oh my god. And we are like, oh my god, this is Dream Theater. And we just 
started talking to them we we had collaborated with Marco Miniman at that time so yeah. we just dropped in his name yeah. so then John Petrucci and Ro- Jordan Rudos were like completely <laughs> okay you know Marco so what's up yeah. and uh, Rutin had attended uh, Jordan Rudos' workshop right. our keyboardist had attended his workshop right. so they just got talking and uh, they just you know freak accidents right. <laughs> and <laughs> lucky freak accidents right, right. yeah so I mean, how do you translate the songs from Nama onto you know live performances? Because all these songs are you know intricately produced uh, inside the studio. Yeah. How do you translate that into your live performances? Uh, <laughs> more <laughs> responsible <laughs> production than myself. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, the songs uh, mainly like uh, like it's uh, usually the uh, featuring artist has just has a small yeah. portion in. The songs and number, mm-hmm. except for uh, Inside My Head, which is the drummer, and even uh, Tekini. Tekini, Tekini as well. Tekini, yeah. So luckily, we have a kick-ass drummer. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. So, <laughs> so he just kills it on the stage. So we have we haven't had any issues right. doing that on stage. I mean, uh, some of the other songs we uh, like uh, myself and Govind sort of uh, take responsibility to do whatever. <laughs> we can in our ability to uh, do some kind of justice to the songs. Right, right. So and somehow Rutin has also pulled off Jordan Rudas. Yeah, he yeah. does a g- great job in Salai Yeah. Right, right. So yeah, right. <laughs> that's about it. So I mean, what was the most? Cha- what were the, some some of the most challenging tracks uh, from Nama that to produce uh, according to you? To produce. Um, the thing is, like every like. Because most of the people in this band have a musical back history, yeah. and we are so lucky that the people who are like Govind, Vipin, Mithunjet, and um, all these people, even Rutin, they are so good at producing. They do a lot of production for a lot of big movies and music directors. Before right. Govind started his solo right. career in. Uh, music direction right. but before that he used to work for very prominent music directors right. same with Mithun Chetan and uh, uh, Vipin also does the same a lot of people work with a lot of people so production and comp- composing has never been an issue for the band okay we, we've always had like it, the problem has always been there's too much too much <laughs> yes we need to sh- filter it down that that that's been the problem I think most dumb of the down time. your own yeah. okay. so and uh, I think also uh, the the production after after the production happens I think the whole band has a say in it like we, we discuss what, what can right. be better what can be done or what shouldn't have been done right. and then the production all mm, I think the core people are Mithun and Govin right, right. They, they do all the production and all the stuff right. and uh, we all do our parts sometimes right. we play sometimes we don't uh, but that song becomes the band song when we start performing it live mm-hmm. and that happens at rehearsals sometimes those rehearsals are at sound checks and uh, uh, hotel rooms or whatever mm-hmm. it is but we are actually this is the wrong message to <laughs> give out to young people but we very rarely practice oh we very very rarely practice together okay. as a band. Practice individually. At yeah, your we, we usually do practice, practice individually, and it's it's more like you know. <laughs> but how does that translate to you? Yeah. You come together and you know. I don't know. It just started <laughs> clicking somehow. It's 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 something that even we are we are not aware of what's happening, and uh, right. we always complain to ourselves like yeah. we never practice. <laughs> how is how is it that we are professional musicians? We don't practice together. <laughs> right. but we do practice like yeah. When, yeah whenever there are like uh, huge festivals so, so like, we yeah. whenever, whenever we are working on a new set list wherein the structure has to yeah, be changed yeah, yeah. that's when everyone meets in Kochi and we practice at his yeah. uh, studio and then we uh, put it out together otherwise uh, or, or else if there is a tribute right and we have to sit together and work yeah, it out yeah. yeah otherwise for the normal gigs uh, we just Come. Nah, it's a gig work for you guys. <laughs> it's not, it's no, no, no. Revision so happens. It, <laughs> somehow we, we I come. Hammered. See, till now, I still go on stage just before the gig. I'll ask him, this riff, what, what note is this? All that happens. But it happens behind the scene. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Somehow okay. We, we pull it off. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I couldn't wait being such a big ensemble. Uh, how do you manage your you know, creative differences between uh, each other? How do you approach that? Everybody is too lazy to say. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, 
the creative differences and the taste are so wide okay that it's <laughs> it's okay i mean we can do whatever you, we want actually like that's the difference between navarasam and uh, nama actually navarasam mm-hmm. we had a clear idea that this is going to be dark this is going to be heavy so in uh, like the production is going to be like heavily uh, riff oriented right guitar driven but when it came to nama it was like let's do whatever we want right and when it, when it comes to production so it's like there, there's no limit a uh, uh, limit in the sense there's something that we shouldn't we, we shouldn't be doing that there's no such talk actually right. we shouldn't be doing this we shouldn't be doing that those kind of restrictions restrictions are not there right. right so this is something unique with us actually some other bands can't do that hmm. when they will have an image that is portrayed they have they will have to do only rock so that works in favor of us actually mm-hmm. so and i think people in this band uh, kind of just get what the other person is trying to do right. yeah. and that respect for each person's music is abundant in everyone right. Right. so that like we try to un- even if we don't agree with it we give right. it time and we try to understand what's right. happening so i think maybe i'm wrong right. yeah right. yeah and we have to understand what are the capabilities of each members right. i mean we are not trying someone making someone to do something they are not comfortable right so that also helps actually right Right, right. right. Finally, I mean, uh, what's next for Thai Kudum Braid? Uh, are you working on any, any album? And yeah. yeah, what can you tell us about that album? What kind of theme it will explore? We will release it only <laughs> when it's finished. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but you can give us a glimpse or something. <laughs> no, uh, you can you can tease no, the audience. Kidding, I, <laughs> I mean, it's at very much at its infant stage right now. Okay. So I mean. can't comment on something like yeah, that i mean like, i mean we, to be honest we are also not sure what we are going to do with okay. it actually so when we'll just uh, some we have some ideas but uh, things will those will open i guess yeah just everything will fall in the, yeah, <laughs> the ingredients right yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 on our way to the market to buy yeah, stuff yeah, yeah. <laughs> uske baad se banegi sabzi yeah. <laughs> buy something come back and then decide what we have and what we should cook <laughs> right 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 so yeah that's it from from my end thank you so much for joining thank you all the best for your performance i'm looking forward to it uh, yeah i mean i'm waiting for your third album like everyone <laughs> it was a great interview and good questions thank you thank, thank you thank you so much thank you